Welcome to the Dashboard Effect Podcast. I'm Rick Thompson. And I'm Caleb Oaks. Caleb, in today's episode, we decided we want to talk about data maturity and the stages of data maturity within companies. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like to start to, uh, yeah, data maturity sounds sounds actually kind of boring, but, you know, really what we're, I think what we want to provide is like some like practical guidance around like, what is it, first of all, like, I don't know, what do you think of when you think of data maturity, right? right. I'm sure not everybody thinks of the same thing. Yeah. It uh, might also be a new term for some people. So we'll kind of explain what it is, how to recognize kind of where you're at in, in this like curve of data maturity, and then, uh, you know, what to do or like when to know, like you need to go to the next level. It's time to level up, right? Yeah, okay, perfect. All right. So when we thinking when we think about data maturity and um, what we're talking about here is, organizational data maturity. So um, we run into a lot of companies. We get hired by companies at Blue Margin to help them move along these stages of data maturity. We really divide companies into one of three categories. Um, and probably the least mature, well, it sounds like a, an insult. <laughs> I don't mean it that way, but least mature is uh, data constrained. And a huge number of companies are here. Right. Some of the characteristics of that are you know, you've got Excel spreadsheets is basically how you're doing your BI. And people are running around collecting data from source systems, exporting CSVs, building Excel sheets, and having to do that manually, you know, whenever they need an update on their reporting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my first, one of, well, not my first job, one of, one of the jobs early in my career, I was an analyst. And my department, there's this huge company where I was working, but in my department specifically, we had very immature data processes when I started there. So what I would do is I would go to SAP, I would go run this report, I would dump it out to Excel, and then I would put it into a pivot table, and then I would send it off to people. And I would do that every week, once a week. I'd have a report on Monday and a report on Tuesday and so on. Yeah, And uh, that's a that's a good indicator of you know, being that on that data constrained, um, right level, and and you'd be amazed. You'd think, well, that's probably just small companies. But as you said, your your company was a multi billion dollar company. Mm -hmm. um, I can think of many companies that are you know in the hundreds of millions of revenue where, you know, they've got an army of Excel analysts that right. are doing exactly this. And so, in fact, I'd say most companies in the mid market are actually probably in this stage or mm -hmm. not far out of it. Yeah, exactly. I think you're exactly right. And that's what we see. Obviously, we have a skewed skewed view well, of it. Well, that's true because people, people who need help come to us. Right, right. right. That's but, a good point. Uh, but I don't think it's far off Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So then the next uh, level of data maturity as we think about it is data aware. How would you describe that? So maybe you've started to dip your toe. Like, So I'll go back to my example. Um, we started to use ClickView. And my process was still largely the same. Like I would still go and download some Excel files, but then I would just run it into ClickView instead of doing a bunch of manual um, munching of the data and VLOOKUPs and stuff. I used ClickView to do that. And then ultimately, um, I think this still falls into this data aware category. I was able to get a like a file drop from IT that had the data that I needed, so I didn't have to do Excel anymore and go manually download the file. Yeah. Um, but it was still, you know, kind of a. Pretty it manual. was just kind of spotty, like spot, you know. Yeah. And my department was really one of the only ones that really adopted that. So even though the whole organization had ClickView, only a few departments really grabbed it and were using BI dashboards. So we only had a few of them. So you're still relying on the actual transactional systems to get a dump. Um, you've got some more automation, mm -hmm. um, but there's probably still some Excel in your case using ClickView. You're not truly uh, data-driven and, and data-enabled at this point, but yeah. you're making progress. Yeah, yeah, and then, you know the the reports were were segmented, right? So I was in inventory and in transportation, and we had we actually had inventory reports and we had transportation reports. Just yeah. in our department, right? And so they, were, they weren't connected in any, yeah. any way. They were still very siloed. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then um, sort of the pinnacle of data maturity, as we think of it, is being data-driven. So uh, a, a bunch of things have happened there. Um, one, uh, one 
strong marker for us is that companies are have actually integrated data from across their business units. So very common in the middle market, especially PE owned, is the buy and build strategy. So a lot of acquisitions going on. Um, when companies are able to acquire a, a, a new company, a new business unit, and actually integrate that data into a system, some kind of a, a data warehouse or data environment, data lake house, whatever it might be, um, so that you don't have people running around and building Excel spreadsheets to try to know what's going on. That's a good sign that you're actually getting to data-driven. There's some other ones, though, too. What, what, what do you look for to know that someone's data-driven? So I think having some, like managing to KPIs and having it pretty much real time um, and being able to hold people accountable to to their number, really, and, and not having to wait for a, I, I guess before I was an analyst, I was I worked in a another department in that same company, and we had a monthly KPI review. Yeah, you know, and that yeah. and it was just like someone we pulled together once a month uh, data to see how we were doing, and it's like okay, well the month's already gone, and right. it was like a week into the next month, and it's like okay, well now I'm already a week into this month. I can't really even change anything at this point, even though I was doing a bad job. Right. So <clears throat> you're, you know, you're starting to have that visibility into performance, you know, across the company. Yeah. Okay. So performance visibility that is near real time. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's from yesterday's business. Right. Maybe it's from two hours ago, depending on how you set it up. I think also what you're starting to see when a company is data driven is you're starting to see mostly self service. Um, BI work for the analysts, they can get to the data they need. They don't have to go to IT and get some kind of a data dump. Right. Uh, and even you're starting to see it for the executives too. Yeah. So executives don't have to get an analyst always to get the data. There's a lot that they can get to by themselves. Right. I think those are the main main ones. So um, again, I think it's self-selecting, but in our customer uh, population, um, you know, a small percentage of, of companies are there. Yeah. A lot of them are sort of in that middle data aware. They know they need to do something about it. They're improving it, but it, it takes some some work to get there. Right. So right. how do you know? You know, in, in some company, you might be fine to be data constrained. Let's say you're a very small company, you've got really simple data source. Maybe you just have one or two that you need. It's not that bad pulling the the CSVs from the source system and producing the report. You got a standard Excel sheet you can plug it into. You've got an analyst that does that for you every day. Maybe that's good enough. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not worth investing to try to get to data aware. Yeah. Um, I could probably come up with arguments for why you should anyway. But yeah. but what generally starts driving you to know? All right, I need to start moving up this this maturity ladder. Yeah. So you can, you kind of hinted at one already, right? Like things just get more complicated. You know, you may have another system come on, or or you need to start combining some sources and you you don't currently do that and um, or you're just kind of your Excel analyst headcount <laughs> right. is getting a little out of control that right. would be another good indicator we've seen like that. uh oh yeah yeah right you have 15 people building Excel reports every yeah, day yeah we've right. seen it yeah we have seen it yeah so there's that um, there's also you know as as you just have more of a need right to see the data more real time like as you're if you're small enough um, you know, have seeing something monthly might be good enough because yeah. you, you kind of are able to keep a lot of the context of what's happening kind of in your head. But as you start growing and things get a little bit crazier, um, you know, your needs for having insight into actually seeing the data is going to going right. to increase. Right. Yeah. As you get more complexity in your organizational structure. So you've got layers of management. You've got people that are trying to manage by KPIs, that type of thing. You need to have that uh, be a lot more mature than you're sort of slapping it together every time you need to look at those. So that's mm -hmm. a big one. I think another one is uh, you find you're running into data quality issues. So you find that you, you spend a lot of time chasing down numbers that just don't seem right or you've got um, duplicate data or, or data that uh, doesn't make sense, dates, for example, in your data that don't make sense, that type of thing you're probably butting up against a maturity, a data maturity issue, and you should think about leveling up because yep. you can spend a lot of time wasted on that. Right. Um, plus, you could be making decisions on faulty data, right. which could be bad. Yeah, it could be bad. <laughs> right, exactly. Especially if somebody's doing something manually every, yeah. every month or every week. You know, somewhere along the line, there's going to be a mistake. Yeah, You know, of course. I think, I think in uh, one of our clients, this was a couple of years ago, uh, they had 
one of the reasons why they're coming to us was exactly this. They had a, a problem um, where they had a, a seven figure typo on their financials. Oh, that's right. I forgot and, about that one. Yeah. And it was like, it was just kind of the last straw for the CEO. It was yeah. like, okay, we're not doing this manual thing anymore. Yeah. You know? That makes me think we should have another criteria that if you ever find yourself referring to something as a magic sheet <laughs> yeah. in yeah. Excel, it's time to do something about that. we've run into a few of those. Yeah. Sort of that sheet that nobody better touch because the business is running on it and we're not sure exactly how it works. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. Um, right. There's another uh, uh, thing that can let you know you need to uh, mature, and I've already referred to it, but when you find you're having a hard time integrating data from different business units, you need to you need to level up at that point because yeah. we see companies use um, financial consolidation tools and FP&A tools to get by with that, but you're really doing a look in the rearview mirror on that. It's it takes a lot of time. It's error prone. You really want to start to actually integrate that data into some kind of a data structure, a data lakehouse, or something, so that mm -hmm. you can get that real time reporting at that level. Right. Right. Yeah, that's a really important one. All right. To put a bow on it, I think the the last thing that might be an obvious uh, sign or trigger that you need to level up is you start getting competitive pressure. You see that your competitors are using data more effectively to outcompete you in the market. They're making decisions more quickly. They seem to be ahead of things. They're doing a better job with their supply line management. Those types of things. Um, and, you know that that seems obvious, but that a lot of times moving to higher data maturity can help you catch up with that. Yeah, right. Like, let's say a so suddenly somebody's undercutting your prices right. and Why? they're doing it well, then it's like, uh oh, they must have some idea or they've they've been able to, you know, improve their efficiency somehow. Yeah. And it's probably because they gained some sort of insight into, oh, okay, here we can save money here or there or whatever. Um, and they're able to, to start out competing you. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, we're out of time. So let's wrap this up. Do you want to kind of summarize for us? Sure. So right. the, the three stages, again, of data maturity, um, stage one is data constrained. And that means you've got a bunch of analysts and Excel people. Um, you're kind of in the Excel stage, right? You're just dumping data out. There's Excel sheets flying around in the emails. Um, it takes a lot of time. You're probably getting very infrequent um, reporting. Uh, yep. then, then the next stage is data aware. So that's kind of like you've, you've got some automation going. Maybe you've got some dashboards, but they're pretty isolated. Um, they're specific use cases, that type of thing. Um, and then the final stage is data driven where you've got uh, you're, you're kind of managing to KPIs. You've got a real time look into things um, and people are able to make the their own decisions kind of by yeah, themselves. You got that self-serve component. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Well, good discussion. Thanks, right. Caleb. Thank you.